not telling me it's recorded. Here we go. <laughs> All right, OK. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Claire Whitehouse. I'm the senior nurse for nursing midwifery and AHP research at the James Paget University Hospitals. And I'm co-chair of the UK and Ireland branch of the IACRN. And I am here today with um, Emil. Emil, would you like to intro? Yes, hi everyone. Um, I am Emil Cano. I am a new clinical research nurse, uh, mainly in oncology at the Bristol Hematology Oncology Center. Uh, that's part of the University Hospitals Bristol and Western NHS Foundation Trust in Bristol, obviously. Uh, I'm new into the role, but my main background was in uh, ITU. I moved to oncology recently and then Within a couple of years, I have moved into research, having have worked from the day unit, and I'm glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to have you in your smiling face. Thank you. So we thought we would speak to you all about today about Emil's experience of how he first became interested in research and when did he hear about research nurses. So I think that's probably the best place to start, Emil. So yeah, 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 <laughs> so how absolutely. How did you hear about the role? I remember um, the first time that uh, I got to be in contact with research nurses was when I was in ITU. You know, they, they come in their uniform and they present themselves, introduce themselves as research nurses. All the while, you know, I was just helping them with um, collecting data, but didn't really think much about I, I didn't really think much about what they did or the sort of stuff that they do. Yeah. But in, in retrospect, um, I didn't realize just by helping them collect data, I was being part of research. Yeah. And then when I moved into oncology, I, the main reason why I moved into oncology was I thought, well, I'm in my late 40s. I've done my share of nights and weekends. <laughs> I just wanted to move into an area of nursing that doesn't involve that. So I went into um, nursing in the chemo day unit, did that for a couple of years. And from there, I was in a lot closer contact with the research nurses because um, I was treating their patients. So getting um, a bit more of the nitty gritty because they, they have to go through the source data sheets, they have to go through the protocol itself before you get to treat a patient. So, so you know exactly what to do when you're treating the patient, not just giving their chemo, but actually following the protocol. And having that, that, having done that for two years, I thought, this is really interesting because even though I had the skills of an ITU nurse and a chemo giving nurse, I thought, I can do this as well because not I I was happy being a chemo trained nurse, but I thought this could be a further step for me in my career. I could still be giving chemo at the same time, being part of the development of um, new standards of treatment in oncology. So I thought, do you have a post? <laughs> 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 and when I said that, they said, yeah, actually, we have a post. And then they told, they told me to do my GCP training. So I did that uh, well before the interview. And when I got interviewed, I, I was quite surprised they gave me the job. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly, so how long have you been in post now? I've, I've been in post now for nine months. And Amazing. it's been really, really good because it was such a massive, um, what's the term? It's such a massive learning curve for being a newbie in the whole clinical um, nursing research world. It's exciting because I get to learn a lot. Um, I love the fact that the balance between admin and um, clinical work, I'm still in touch with patients, but at the same time, I get to be behind the computer organizing everything for my patients. I yeah. just love the balance between the two. Lovely. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> it so is. when you when you first moved into your new post, um how I mean it sounds to me like you're pretty excited. <laughs> Very <laughs> um how did it feel that what support were you given and, and how did it what was it like? How did it feel? Um 
it felt like a completely new world to me, obviously. Uh, the first few weeks, I think for the first four and five weeks, I was shadowing my team leader who is um, a band seven or band eight um, research nurse. I was just following her. Um, I was there not to do things for the first two weeks. I was just observing everything. And just by observing, I was able to uh, put together the skills that I already have. And I thought, well, actually, I can do this, just observing what they do. Because a lot of the basic skills I already have. It's just, Brilliant. yeah, it's just yeah. ensuring how to learn that alongside being a nurse with um, basic clinical skills, that uh, I also get to learn and involve myself into learning how research is being done yeah. by a clinical research nurse. So after the first, after four, five weeks, I was let out on my own, which I thought was quite scary. <laughs> <laughs> but um, obviously, they, my, my team leader um, observed me do a few patients with her, you know. She let me get on with it. She didn't do anything. She was there observing. And I think from those three episodes, she was happy with what, what I was doing. That's why she let me go on my own. And then I was given um, a promise that if you're unsure about anything, just come to me, just ask. And there are no yeah. stupid questions. And I think um, that's really helpful for somebody who's new in research, you know, that you don't have to know it all to start with. Yeah. As long as you know that you have a supportive manager who's there willing to coach you whenever you need it, um, it's great. It's great. Yeah. So, uh, and think, so just thinking about what, what does your support network look like? Have you found, because it's quite a big, as you know, from my ACRN now, yes. <laughs> it's quite a big network of research nurses internationally. Um, and I just wondered how you felt about that or whether you've been able to explore any of that yet. Yes. Um, initially, obviously, before I got into research, uh, I know you personally already. And from that point of view, my interest in research, well, you've sparked <laughs> my interest in research as well as by a couple of friends who moved into research before me. On top of the fact that um, uh, obviously I get to meet uh, different research nurses within my hospital trust or organization, um, clinical research nurses around the UK and around the world who I've met on Twitter have been quite supportive, you know. Uh, whenever I'm unsure about anything, when, uh, when it comes to learning my competencies as a clinical research nurse, the Twitter world is there teeming mm -hmm. with experienced and knowledgeable and very supportive, enthusiastic, uh, experienced clinical research nurses. Um, People like say um, Emma Heron. When I pinged her uh, a private message saying, "There's something I don't understand about informed consent," and with just a few messages, she was able oh. to clarify things for me. And this is all for free, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the positive <laughs> things about social media when it's handled very well. If you use it for the right things and stuff, it works. <laughs> it, it becomes a yeah. really very it becomes a really good platform for nurses supporting nurses especially yeah. in clinical research definitely definitely i think we and you know that yourself don't exactly you? what i was just thinking as well and for for lots of patients as well because we're all patients sometimes too not yeah not forget that um but you, you know there's so many patient groups as well that you can learn from i don't know whether you've met any of those yet but um there's yeah sort of through all the hashtags and things it's just it's just great isn't it <laughs> it is great <laughs> So what um what was I going to ask you? Um what would say what would you say is your biggest challenge moving from a previous role into a research role? Is there anything that particularly stands out or actually have you found it because of your background experiences? Um I think the biggest challenge really was learning the language. <laughs> yeah. Coming from a completely clinical nurse 
and then going into research, I realized that, you know, after you have done the basics of your GCP training, in, in a research environment, the language is completely new to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I made sure that if there was something that was mentioned in a meeting or in, in a safety brief, if, if a new word came up or a new acronym came up and I didn't know what it was, <laughs> I wasn't afraid to ask questions because um, I'm glad that I've been in a position where I have enough clinical experience to understand the job. But the whole research environment was a completely, like I said, it was a completely different language to me. And I've, le I'm, I've learned the basics. I'm not saying I know it all yet, but yeah, it was the language really that yeah. they use. Yeah, you're it's not alone. <laughs> you're not alone. <laughs> the first few meetings, I was like, what are they on about? And then, <laughs> Uh, a few weeks down the line, everything you know, things made just m made more sense as I I, I, as I was doing uh, the clinics at the same time learning the job. Amazing. So I was just wondering with your um, with the patients. So it sounds like you're probably seeing some of the same group of patients now that you were seeing in your previous. Yes. Yeah. And uh, how does the dynamic? What does the dynamic feel like with the, with your patients now? Do they? It, it, I mean, I know you, so I can imagine <laughs> it's not really anything. Really, but I wondered what it feels like for you, or you know, and, and have your conversations with them changed at all because of your role mm. or your knowledge? Or massively, really? massively, what? because when I was in the when I was nursing in the chemo day unit, I was just giving their chemo. Yeah. Whereas now, where where I have my own cohort of patients okay. in. Um, glioblastoma trials as well as in prostate cancer trials. I, I don't just give their chemo. I'm also able to be given that opportunity to have a prof professional relationship with them. I also, being, a re being their research nurse, I'm, their, I'm also their sort of social worker or clinical nurse specialist. Me being given that, Privilege. I think it's such a privilege to be um, a fixed furniture, whether that's good for them or not. I don't know. <laughs> I have no but doubt it is. <laughs> it's, it's a privilege to be a permanent face to them during their treatment journey. Yeah. And it's amazing. It's amazing. I, I just love it. I just love it. And have you had, um, it's, it's interesting. I keep thinking, what, uh, I'm asking you about how you feel about them. I wonder if have any of them said to you how they feel about you having this different relationship, you know, from their they perspective. They do. They what, do. Are you they able do. to share? Yeah. <laughs> or, or... <laughs> um, for the first time in years, um, I had, I don't normally get Christmas cards for patients. But <laughs> la last Christmas, I had about 10. Really? From patients. Uh, well, obviously not just, not yeah. just Christmas cards, but, <laughs> uh, you know, tiny gifts Love of appreciation, uh, all from patients that I'm treating in clinical yeah. trials. Yeah. Uh, because again, going back to your previous question, um, when you're a clinical research nurse, you have that ongoing relationship with them. And they, when they feel that they are safe because you're looking after them, for their safety, being in a clinical trial, you also you also have that human aspect of a relationship because they know that you mean well, and uh, you're able to make them feel safe in their treatment journey. I think that's one of the joys of clinical research. Oh, that that's amazing. That what you've just said there, I can imagine it pinging up on the screen. <laughs> the most amazing quote. It's lovely. <laughs> um, what else can what else can we talk about about being a new research nurse? Um, you look like you were about to say something. Did I interrupt you? Uh, no, no, no. Um, I I can add that something to what I just said. Um, obviously, working in cancer research, especially the ones in um, the, the brain trials, 
almost a lot of the time, uh, the prognosis is not very good. Um, like I said, adding to my previous um, little story about the patients, one of my patients recently, uh, his cancer has progressed. And because of that, he had to move into palliative care. Um, having worked with him and his wife for the past few months, and when they realized that I was no longer in a frequent con frequent contact with them because they have moved into palliative care, um, they contacted me and said, um, we miss your voice. Can you give us a call? You know, it's things like uh, that you never get. It's things like that you that you never get. But obviously, I still do their follow ups. But when you get messages like that, it makes yeah. you feel, yeah, we probably, you know, we we, we think what we do um, in our roles as clinical research nurses is not a lot. But actually, it's the value that we add to the patient's lives and experience. It's lovely, just giving me goosebumps. <laughs> and I was, go I was going to ask you why research is important to you, but I think you've probably just summed that up in the most beautiful nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else that you would add to that? I think the fact that I'm now in this world of clinical research nursing, um, I feel it's such a privilege to be part of the department, uh, that part, that arm of healthcare, especially our healthcare system here in the UK, you know, the NHS. To be part of um, an, an organization or a movement that creates and keeps looking after, keeps looking for questions to improve what is now standard of care. I think it's such a privilege and to be a part of that, it's such a privilege and joy to add to my nursing career. And if I retire in this job, oh, hopefully <laughs> in the next 10 or so years, I'll be very happy. Oh, that's lovely. Um, so finally, because I just think that's, I think this is coming to a, a nice rounded interview now. What would you say to somebody who said they were thinking about going into clinical research nursing? I will say, go for it. <laughs> go for it because um, it's a very good um, branch of nursing. Because in clinical research, when you're nursing clinical research, you're not just a nurse. You are also part of the future of whatever nursing you are doing, you know you are part of the development of um, care. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important. Uh, we should not rest on our laurels. Yeah, what we do now in practice is safe, but we should always look for ways to keep improving and keep asking questions. Um, research is great because it keeps us um, Make, it, it helps us to ensure that we are providing care that is just not safe, but it's always evidence-based. Lovely. Thank you. Thank Emil, you. thank you so much for all that you're doing. Thank you to your patients as well. For thank you too. Yeah, them. yeah. And thank you for speaking with me today. And we'll see it's you soon. It's my pleasure. And I might just throw in here to anybody that's watching this that Emil will be getting married when this is playing next week. So <laughs> it's a lovely wedding. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Enjoy it. I will speak to you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. <laughs>